and welcome. You're watching Ask BQ on Bloomberg Quint Live. I am Agam Bakil and with me is Alex Matthew. Hi, Alex. Hey, Agam. Well, if you've got questions in equity, this is the perfect show for you. You can send those queries to us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube and WhatsApp. You can also call us on 022-4540-4141. Or you can mail us on askbq at bloombergquint.com. Only make sure to add the Ask BQ hashtag. Well, the markets for now are showing some promise with the Nifty advancing towards 11,000 ever so slightly. And this perhaps has taken everyone by surprise, this gain of around half a percent today. It's off day's highs, but well, it's advancing all the same. And it's the same for the Sensex 2 advancing when moving towards the mark of well, 36,700. The Nifty Banking Index is also gaining, but not as much as the benchmarks. And well, we do have a lot of volatility, or especially in that particular sector. But it was up by as much as three tenths of a percent. Moving on, let's talk about uh, you know some of your uh, other stocks, rather uh, the broader market indices like the mid cap and the small cap indices. Uh, well, they're actually underperforming the the broader markets considering the decline that we've seen in the mid cap index as well as the small cap index. So some weakness coming coming through. But uh, moving on to uh, well your stocks, your top gainers and losers for today, we have uh, Reliance Industries. Look at that one comfortably above the mark of 1200 up another 3.4 percent and it is certainly showing a lot of strength with respect to its volumes too. Sun Pharma looking at a little bit of recovery after two straight days of severe losses. Is this a bout of short covering? Can we expect more weakness to come through? Well, that perhaps may be a good idea to ask our experts today. And Infosys, of course, is also advancing by as much as 2%. On the losing end, again, uh, you know, not too many stocks, but among the few, we have Hero Motor Corp, Bajaj Auto, and Indian Oil Corp declining in trade. It's a fairly mixed day of trade, but of course, the big positive, Alex, is that, uh, well, the Nifty is uh, once again trying to move out of that range that we've seen it move within in the last few days. Led by a few heavyweights, as you sure. mentioned, Agam. Let's get our two experts in for the day. We've got Sharmila Zoshi, an independent investment advisor uh, who's uh, joining us in the studio. And we've also got Amar Singh of Angel Broking who's here to answer all of your questions. Welcome, both of you. I'm going to start with a mail query. Or do you perhaps want to look at uh, some of the big news? I think LNT, a lot of people want to know about LNT. Uh, Sabdar Junaid, in fact, the first query that we have on YouTube, uh, he's asking what the technical view on LNT is, but I think that we can get a fundamental view as well, considering the kind of declines that we've seen in the not too uh, far uh, past. Right, so well, actually LNT has had absolutely no reaction. I know, Alex, but we I'm were saying expecting... from, uh, from the 21st of December onwards, mm. where it was at levels of 1400, well, you know, 1,460. Sure. I'm not talking about the most recent update, which is the, uh, the buyback that was scrapped by uh, uh, the Securities and Exchange mm. Board of India. Uh, let's take a technical view here because Safdar Junaid is talking about declines, as I mentioned, from 1440 all the way down to 1310. He's asking whether it makes sense uh, to enter this current level. Uh, Amar, what's your view quickly on uh, LNT and then we'll go to Sharmila on this. Yeah, LNT overall on uh, uh, the long term charts uh, remains positive. Uh, however, on the monthly chart, we are seeing some topping out. Uh, pattern for this particular stock. So, uh, 15, uh, so uh, 1450, 1460, that's a, uh, that's a top that uh, the stock has formed. Whereas on the downside, the stock continues to remain very strongly supported around uh, 1200 odd levels. So, the stock and currently it's around 1320. So, there is a possibility that the stock could go in for some consolidation. Uh, but any, any dip towards uh, uh, 1250 odd levels can be used uh, to buy uh, for a buying opportunity because uh, below 1200 the stock has extremely strong uh, support and there is a possibility that the stock could retrace all the way up and uh, move towards uh, 1440 1450 levels good levels to buy Sharmila? oh yes i would think so because you know i think one of the sort of uh, new themes that has emerged for the this year is the fact that uh, uh, this whole infra space has done nothing for the past five six years and now the cycle has come where people will start uh, their capex again and then if you're talking of capex the capex cycle reviving i think uh, the obvious beneficiary and uh, sort of the lead beneficiary should be larsen given the fact that it's a uh, it's it's one of the largest companies uh, there again but i think uh, the little negative that has come is that perhaps uh, the order inflow has not been uh, what was sort of it has not been that great yeah so uh, i think the proof lies in the pudding you'll have to really see the order pick up if you really are seeing that capex revival and i think maybe that you could see a couple of quarters down the line so at this point in time it's a little tricky whether you will really see 
uh, that capex revival coming but if you are really going to bet on that and if that's going to be the theme uh, then lnt is your stock Okay, oh, well, I'm looking at the way LNT has moved in the past few years, and it's actually not given, uh, you know, a, a substantial returns. In fact, over 2017 and 2018, and now 2019, it's gone up as much as 20%. Not the most desirable stock to hold in your portfolio, considering the returns we've seen otherwise. But, uh, Sharmila, we have another question, and this one is for the auto ancillary sector. I'm going to take up a, a query from Mail. Krunal, who writes to us on mail, and he has been investing in Madison Sumi for a, well, with a 10-year perspective. We also have a bunch of other uh, well viewers who want to know about uh, Madison Sumi. So uh, I'm going to take this one up with you. To what extent is Madison Sumi's fortune uh, dependent on how it does in the world, and uh, how we do stand uh, on the stock? So it's a stock I like, but I completely agree with you. I think what's gone wrong for it was first that whole Volkswagen issue and yeah. how it hit them. And I think that is a very good indication of uh, how dependent really it is on, uh, because this whole strategy has been to acquire companies in the European region and, uh, you know, so. get... Uh, so their client base is very strong and the kind of uh, OEMs, etc. that are s signed up with them, they're absolutely the who's who of the auto sector. Yeah. So, you know, all that part is great. I think the way the management has thought out their strategy, that is also great. I think this concerns with whole, this whole Brexit, uh, what it throws up and what is happening in Europe could uh, affect. And uh, uh, I think in the domestic, uh, on the domestic front, I think not just Mothers and Sumi, but uh, especially the companies which are more... Uh, uh, whose profile is more uh, towards uh, the domestic companies could sure. suffer because we are actually seeing a slowdown in autos after many, many years. Hmm. Okay, the, in numbers. actually, uh, yeah. if I can have a go over the follow-up question because uh, we have another viewer, Bilamendu, and he, while he already had, did want a long-term view on Mother Sumi and as Sharmila has already spoken about it, he also wanted to compare it with something like a Jamna auto and uh, I wonder why he's mixing it up with Ashok Leyland, but yeah, Mr. Sharmila, if you could give your view on both these two in comparison, perhaps. Ashok Leyland at uh, another 52-week low today, yeah, <laughs> just pointing out. So, uh, I think uh, the stocks I'd go with would be Madhusan Sumi and Ashok Leyland. Sure. Uh, because I think that uh, uh, Ashok Leyland also uh, sort of started correcting way before the rest of the market started correcting yeah. because of uh, the resignation, etc. So, I think once that is back in, back in place, uh, uh, to my mind, the uh, CV cycle will uh, not suffer as much as the passenger vehicle yeah. cycle. Yeah. So from just that perspective, I think their numbers will sort of uh, uh, stabilize in another couple of months' time. So uh, I think, yes, there is a sort of a base effect on uh, the entire space, but uh, I, I still would like, uh, I, I would like uh, Ashok Leyland at uh, current valuations. Just a word on Ashok Leyland. I'm looking at its five-year price-to-earnings average. Uh, and it stands at around 62 times as against the current price to earning uh, <laughs> stands at 15 times. So, mm. uh, uh, you know, as some would say that a lot of the negatives are already priced Price, in yeah. and there possibly could be uh, not too much downside to Ashok Leyland. But then again, uh, you know, there are plenty of stocks out there which have well, performed and gone ahead and done worse. So, yes, it's... Uh, yeah. Agam, you know, normally we take uh, a lot of stock-related queries. Uh, off and on, we, we tend to get a few queries that are outside the ambit of the stock markets, and this one is. Bappi Kuri has written us a mail, and he wants to know about real estate investment trust. Bappi, uh, as you're probably aware, a few years back, there was talk of really giving a fillip to the real estate industry, and that's where these instruments were introduced, but they haven't really taken off as they were perhaps meant to. Uh, the idea is similar to a mutual fund in that there's a trust that is created, that essentially invests in real estate assets and then uh, the trust earns rental income and that is distributed among the units or the unit holders of a particular trust. Uh, it's essentially the same thing. They haven't taken off, like I said, uh, as they were intended to, but that's a short write-up. We've also got... Uh, so if uh, I could just add to that, I think one of the reasons why they haven't taken off is that our market is not as well... Uh, uh, sort of organize as say the US market yeah. is where and you know the you have yields are not as high yeah and then you know you have grades and you know that if the, most of their properties are within uh, in this in this region then you know they get this kind of valuation mm -hmm. and so on so I think uh, the, it's we are still some time away from really getting to uh, that kind of clarity on uh, how to uh, price our get our pricing right for the real estate right. space? I believe. Okay. Uh, uh, yes. So, so we do have Kotak Mandra Bank's earnings, and for now, uh, we are looking at. Uh, okay. So 
I'm looking at the way we've seen coming through this interest income expense stands at around 3300 crores and your interest income stands at around 6200 uh, 6, crores so it's uh, roughly 3000 odd crores uh, it's net profits again at 1290 crores but we need to put that against expectations we aren't really seeing too much of a, a movement when it comes to well Kotak and the bank at this point in time but uh, it's the expectations of which are the most uh, important uh, for now the way uh, well uh, we see it expectations were at around 1190 crores so its stop line is certainly uh, much higher than what we were working with and against the consensus too and which is possibly why we are seeing that rise in the stock price but it's not uh, as much uh, uh, the more important perhaps question is that where we see this net interest income as well as uh, you know the way we see development of your NPA ratios that's the gross NPA ratios and the net NPA ratios I'm still waiting for more details to emerge with respect to well it's provisioning as well for this particular quarter and its asset quality that could give us a better idea as far as profitability is concerned because of the fact that these numbers are above expectations I wouldn't be too concerned about the provisioning for this particular quarter but again we're gonna to have to wait for the fine print to come in for now it is now moved into the green advancing by as much as four tenths of a percent and there you have it that's your gross NPA ratio too so I guess we're gonna to have to wait for numbers to come in then eventually we can move ahead and address uh, uh, but uh, Shamila any word on Kotak Mahindra Bank if you track this what's what's uh, how are you reading the stock even at these prices would you enter into this one well uh, you, you need to get clarity on that whole uh, shareholding issue sure sure so I don't think that it's uh, so much of a numbers thing because I think right. those were expected to be okay yeah and as you said uh, the profit seems to be uh, above estimate yeah yeah. So I think from that perspective, we are fine. It's just, you know, how are they going to address this? And I think it's high time that they did. Right, mm -hmm. yes. So I would wait to hear on that. Okay. Just a quick point. I've pulled up the uh, P&L statement uh, for the current for the quarter gone by and the NPA number uh, as a percentage of advances is coming at 2.07 and that compares with a reading of 2.15 percent for the previous quarter so uh, on a percentage basis there has been an improvement on a gross basis uh, the number currently stands at uh, 4128.68 crore and that's a slight increase on a gross basis compared with the previous quarter that is that reading was remember just above 4000 crores that's 4,033 crore uh, and remember uh, you've already pointed out 1,290 crore was yeah. the net profit number that compares of course uh, to 1,053 uh, on a year-on-year -year basis. Okay Alex I'm going to get in an expert here we have Manish Oswal of uh, Nirval Bank Securities who's joining us on the phone line. Manish uh, good morning and thanks for joining us afternoon pardon me how are the numbers looking for you right now with respect to Kotak Mother Bank what are you making of your initial read here? So, uh, if I see the stand on performance uh, uh, numbers of Kotak Mahindra Bank, uh, especially on the net interest income side, they have seen the stability of the margin after so many quarters of uh, pressure on the margin. So, that is a one positive side on the number. And secondly, uh, in terms of provision right back, because they have made the very large provision on account of ill moment in the first two quarters of this fiscal. And there is a reversal of that. Uh, so, in compared to September quarter, that, that was a 353 debit. Now it is a negative uh, figure of 3230. And and there is some adjustment from other income to the provision line. So it looks like operating profit lower, but there is an adjustment. So if you look at the overall performance of the bank asset quality side, there is a stability on quarter to quarter basis, and the net interest margin and the balance sheet growth is healthy. So overall, good set of numbers from the Kotak. Yeah, on the consolidated. Yeah, yeah. Please, please go on, Manisha. Go on. Yeah, on the consolidated side, uh, we all know uh, this quarter has been very subdued from the market volume perspective. So, Kotak Security uh, reported weak numbers, and Kotak Prime, uh, which is NBFC, also reported weak numbers. Other subsidiary performance are broadly in line. Uh, can you come in a little bit on that uh, that uh, uh, you know that provisioning number and how you reading it? Uh, and in terms of the slight increase in the gross NPAs, not in terms of percentage, but in terms of uh, actual values, it's not a very significant amount. So it's it's stable on the asset quality front. So, uh, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, asset quality perspective, the, uh, both the gross NP and the net NPA show the stability of asset quality. As far as the provision is concerned, as I said, Kotak Mahindra Bank had provided 
significant amount of provision on account of FDM provision, uh, FDM of uh, government securities in the quarter one, quarter two. And we all know in this quarter there was a sharp rally in the bond market and that reverted in the uh, provision line. So there's a, like a reversal of the FDM provision and government securities and is asset quality stable. So there are hardly any incremental or loan loss provision on the NPAs. Right, got it. I understood that. All right. And in terms of, uh, are you also looking at the book and, and looking at the loan growth? Is that something that you were monitoring and how are you seeing that moving as well? So I, I'm watching out the quarter's commentary with respect to loan book growth and secondly, the margin outlook. These are the two major uh, things to watch out from the commentary. And secondly, what is the assessment of the SME segment? Because they have alluded earlier that uh, they are seeing some pressure on the SME segment. So whether the trend is stabilized or they uh, continue to see the pressure in terms of asset quality and growth is true. So these are the things I'll watch out apart from the promoter stake sale PRD. Okay, Manish, uh, we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, taking us through your initial take on uh, for Kotak Mahindra Bank's numbers. Well, what we're looking at is a considerable surge when it comes to growth in net interest income as well, something that we hadn't addressed earlier. It's 27% growth coming through, and that's, again, much higher than what we were working with in, in terms of comparison and con consensus. So on the whole, the numbers looking good, provisioning, of course, um, down, and that's the reason why we've seen that surge in profits as well. Mm, absolutely, mark to market. And like he said, it's all about the bond markets and how they function. Uh, but let's move on and take a short-term view. Uh, we're coming to you, Amar, on this one. Uh, we've got Gopal Dhut asking for near-term targets for first source solutions. Let's pull up the chart and see where it's currently trading, and then perhaps we can tell him whether or not to make a trade in this one. What's the view here, Amar? Yeah, uh, looking at this particular uh, stock, what we are seeing is that the stock uh, seems to have bottomed out, and uh, from almost 45, 46 levels, uh, it rallied towards 53. Currently, it's around 51 uh, odd levels. The long-term uh, trend for the stock uh, remains positive. However, on the upside, the stock will run into resistance around 55, 56. So that could be a level where uh, one can look at uh, booking some profits because only may a major meaningful rally would only happen if the stock consistently sustains above 55 levels. Okay. Well, uh, Amar, actually, I have one more for you, and this is to do with uh, a technical view on Infosys. We have seen uh, a quite a bit of a spurt, actually. Uh, in uh, the past uh, three or four days after it's, it's come out with its earnings. And if I am not mistaken, I remember having a word with you on this one earlier last week as well. How are you viewing trade on this one now? And would you go ahead and buy Infosys even at these levels? We have a question from Ridisha. He wants a view on Infosys. Yeah, uh, looking at Infosys, Infosys uh, uh, continues to remain extremely positive on the long-term charts as well as the short-term charts. But uh, uh, what I would suggest is that since it is now trading in overbought territory in all different time frames, so any pullback can be used as a buying opportunity. Ideally, a good level to buy Infosys uh, would be somewhere around uh, 725, 730 levels because the stop loss needs to be below 705. And if the stock, uh, because if you look at the stock, the stock made a high of uh, 755 uh, in uh, in uh, December. So and uh, earlier 748, 750. So this 750, 760, that's a very crucial zone of resistance for Infosys. So uh, if the stock breaches that level, then the stock is definitely stated higher towards uh, 795, 800 levels. So yes, any dip should be used as a buying opportunity in Infosys. All right, that's the view on Infosys, which as Agam pointed out, has been uh, doing quite well in the recent past. Let's uh, look at uh, a view from uh, Sharmila on Prasenji Chaudhary's question. He's asking for a fundamental view on IOL Chemicals. Let's pull up the chart and see where it's currently trading. IOL Chemicals, uh, what's the view here? It's currently at 220, up 3.6%. Uh, I think that this entire space is good. And within that, I think IOL Chemicals is trading at fairly decent valuations. So if he has a stock, he should definitely hold it. Okay, Sharmila, you know, a few uh, weeks ago, we had an update on Vakrangi. Uh, basically, it's it getting some clean shit. Uh, over certain kendras, uh, which was, of course, in the IOS storm earlier this year, last year as well. We have a question from Amil, and his question is, uh, what is the fundamental view on Vakrangi? Would you, uh, well, 
want to nibble into Vakrangi at this point in time or do you want to wait for more clarity on several of his issues? Yes, absolutely. I think I would wait for more clarity and I think in any case within that space my uh, recommendation is now really to invest in large cap IT. Okay. Because I think the way the business has shifted and the way we've seen uh, digital contribution from in large cap IT companies yeah. grow, for me that's the preferred theme. Uh, at this point in time. Okay. So I would uh, definitely avoid Vakrangi. All right. Okay, uh, let's take a short term query. Uh, Rangaraj and Balakrishna on uh, Facebook is asking for a technical view. In the banking space, Amar, in, do you see any uh, possible trades for the next six months or so? Yeah, looking at uh, short term trades, ICICI is one stock uh, which one can uh, definitely keep a watch on because uh, the stock uh, uh, continues to be extremely strong on the long term charts, be it the monthly charts or the or the weekly charts so uh, currently it's into some consolidation it did make a high of 383 and currently it's around 372 so any uh, pullback in the stock towards uh, 365 360 levels that can be a very good uh, buying opportunity for the stock and the stock has formed a bottom so uh, below 348 one can have a stop and uh, once the stock uh, starts trading above 384 385 levels then uh, it can rally towards 415 uh, levels. Okay, uh, uh, a technical question on Sun Pharma as well. Amar, after severe weakness last week, we have seen a little bit of uh, a recovery today. Is this just a temporary bounce back and would you take this opportunity to go sell uh, in, and in perhaps initiate fresh short positions in Sun Pharma? We have a question from Krish. He wants a six month view on the stock. See, looking at Sun Pharma from a long-term perspective, uh, the, st the trend definitely remains down, no doubt about it. Even on the weekly charts, the trend continues to be extremely bearish. But the sort of uh, volume which we saw last Friday uh, clearly suggests that uh, that huge uh, uh, buying has happened in uh, Sun Pharma. And uh, somewhere the stock, uh, the low that uh, it made on Friday, that was 370-odd levels. So, so that's going to uh, hold for some time. And uh, uh, Sun Pharma could get into some consolidation, but I would not suggest uh, shorting around these levels. Uh, if uh, one is interested in uh, shorting, then ideally uh, somewhere around uh, 408, 410 level can be a good uh, level to short with a stop loss above 424 and a target of uh, 380 on the downside. All right, uh, voice of the lamb. I'm really curious. You've been asking questions over the last few days. I want to know what your name is. Uh, but anyway, voice of the lamb is looking for stock suggestions. I'm not going to ask uh, uh, for 10, uh, but I am going to ask Sharmila to give you a few at least for the next 10 years. For the next 10 years? Yes. So I think first, straight off, my suggestion would be, uh, I, I would recommend some stocks, but revisit them every year. Yes. Because, you know, we are now living in times where things go out of fashion very yes, fast. Yes. So uh, you need to always stay relevant. So I think straight off you need to go with large caps and you need to st uh, stay with stories that can sustain for 10 years. Hmm. So I think one obvious is banking. So go with an HDFC bank. I think I like ICICI bank also at this level. So one of these banks. Go with an IT company. I think they've sort of proven that uh, they are uh, nimble enough to even uh, do things uh, uh, when things get tough for them. Uh, so with a 10-year perspective, maybe a TCS, I think, you know, that looks good. Sure. Uh, definitely, I think, include uh, something from uh, the infra or, you know, that sort of related uh, space. So we spoke of Larson a little while earlier, so uh, uh, something like that. And uh, uh, I, uh, you could probably uh, include something from the FMCG space because mm. I don't see uh, people stopping to buy a toothpaste or a... Uh, right. you know, drink tea or whatever. So, you know, you can go with an HUL or a Nestle or something like that if you have a 10-year view. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, well, a whole host of stocks uh, were recommended by Sharmila and across different sectors, so, uh, so you can actually diversify your portfolio there. But we, we'll hit the rapid-fire segment now, and uh, I'd like to request our experts for keeping their answers as short as possible so as to accommodate as many queries as possible, and even a sentence would do. And I'm going to take one up from Raghav Rungta. His question is a technical view on Bharti Airtel. Uh, he wants a short-term view after the current dip. Uh, Amar, uh, how are you reading cues on Bharti Airtel and what would you recommend? Uh, I would say that uh, Bharti Airtel continues to remain bearish. Uh, the levels to watch out for is 325, 330 on the upside and uh, on the downside it has got very strong support around 295, 300. So it's trading in a consolidation zone, so rather avoid the stock. 
All right, Jay's got a question for you, Sharmila. Between Tejas Networks and Sterlite Technologies, which is the bit, better bet for the long term? Uh, well, I prefer Sterlite Tech because I think, you know, it's a, uh, uh, the optic fiber business, I think, is now coming of age. And uh, so, yeah, Sterlite Tech. Okay, uh, another question, uh, Sharmila. Do you have a view on Lind delisting? Because that, I think that delisting has been called off right now. We have Mang Sarap who has that question. Right. So yes, because I think uh, uh, the price that was offered for uh, delisting was way below what the market price was yeah. and the stock has just crashed. Right. So I mean, I don't understand the query really because uh, it's obviously it's, it's a buyback that's going to fail. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Let's take a quick uh, technical view on Aurobindo Pharma. Uh, this one's for you, Amar. Uh, for the next two to three months, do you have a view? Yeah, uh, looking at Aurobindo Pharma, uh, the stock continues to remain positive and strong on the long-term charts. Uh, so yes, uh, the stock has a potential to rally. Uh, immediate level of resistance around 825, 830. If someone has bought uh, or, or a pharma, then one should definitely hold. Otherwise, uh, buying around dips or towards uh, 760 uh, can be a uh, can be a good opportunity with the stop loss uh, below 740 and a target of 830 on the upside. Okay, we have Bharat Gangwangni who wants a fundamental and a technical view on Ashok Leyland. Bharat, you already addressed uh, Ashok Leyland from a fundamental standpoint. I'm going to take an, a, a technical view here. Amar, uh, how are you positioned on Ashok Leyland right now? Uh, see, Ash Ashok Leyland continues to remain extremely bearish on the long-term charts as well. It's in overbought, uh, oversold territory, so, so that's one saving grace, but still the stock has been uh, trending uh, lower. and. Uh, uh, if you look at it, uh, it does have some support or coming around 88 levels, 88, 90 levels because uh, that's going to act as a crucial support. If that is breached, then the stock can head lower towards 82, 83 levels. All right. Uh, well, uh, on that note, we've reached the end of uh, this particular show. So I'm going to take a moment to thank both our experts, Sharmila and Amar, for helping our viewers with all the queries. But with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Ask BQ. Do remember uh, that we're just a tweet, post or call away, so keep your queries coming and we promise to address as many of them as possible on our shows. For all the previous episodes, you can log on to the website bloombuckpoint.com or search the YouTube channel. I'm sure that some of those queries, even ones from yesterday, will continue to be relevant even today, even tomorrow. Do stay tuned. This is Bloomberg Print. Up next is Power Lunch.